Good morning, everyone. Today, I would like to present a paper called Graph Attention Networks. It was published on ICLR in 2018. So my presentation is divided into four parts. The first part is motivation. The second part is art model architecture, analysis, and experiments. So let's begin with the motivation part. So in our real life applications, sometimes data can be modeled like the uh, graph. We can pay attention to the social network. So in this social network, each node corresponds to a person. And two person, if two persons are friends, then there is a link between them. So we can form like this social network. And we can also regard the color like the gender. So red corresponds to male, and blue corresponds to female. And in terms of the social uh, citation network, we can also like this kind of network. So each node corresponds to an academic paper. And if this paper set this paper, there is a link between them. So in terms of each academic paper, it also has content. It has title and abstract and other content. So we can also generate other networks, like web link network, rock network, and so on. However, sometimes we would like to generate representations for each node so that we can use these representations to perform several tasks. So one of these tasks includes the classification. So for example, in terms of this social network, we can classify a new node, whether it is male or female. And in terms of this citation network, we can classify the academic papers into machine learning category or software engineering category, and so on. So the second one is recommendation. We can also use the representations of the nodes to recommend something. So for example, in terms of this social network, given a new user, we can recommend the friends of this new user using their corresponding representations. And in terms of the citation network, we can also recommend other new papers for you to read, and, add, and similarly, link prediction, and so on. However, the key question is, how do we generate representations for the nodes? So there are multiple kinds of information that we can use. The first kind of information is the graph structure, because each node in this social network has its neighbors, right? So different node has different neighbors. So we can use the structure of this graph, use the neighbors of each node to learn the representation for these nodes, and then perform several tasks. Of course, we can also use the text content. In terms of this citation network, each node corresponds to an academic paper. So it must have its own textual content. So it has title and abstract. So we can use the content of this academic paper to learn the representations of it, to learn the topics of it. Right? So of course, we can also use the image. Maybe we have another graph, image graph, and then use the image to learn representations. However, the majority of current research papers only consider one information, like so the most famous model called Deep Walk, which is also a baseline of this paper, only considers the graph structure to learn the representations. However, there are multiple kinds of information that we can make use of to learn representations. So this is what this paper achieves. This paper, the model of this paper, tries to combine these kind of modalities to learn a high quality representation for nodes, to learn a unified representation for nodes. So this is also why this paper is a multimodal learning paper. So in, the, in terms of this paper, this paper tries to combine the graph structure and the text content to learn the high quality representations. Now I turn to the model architecture. So suppose this is a given graph, and suppose this is the whole graph. And suppose we would like to learn the representation for A. Then we put the target node A into here. And then A has several neighbors, right? B and E are neighbors of A. And in this paper, we also regard A as a neighbor of itself. And then A has three neighbors, A, B, and E. So A, B, E, we put it here. Of course, A, A, B, E. B has neighbors, right? A, C, E, D, of course, B itself. So B has four neighbors, A, B, C, D, right? And E, A, E, F, so A, E, F. And this part is the first layer, layer one, and this part is second layer, layer two. Of course, we can also expand this model to multiple layers, layer three, layer four, and layer five. The number of layers is a hyperparameter in this model that depends on the specific data set. So in this paper here, in, in order to illustrate the concept of this model, suppose, huh, suppose we only have two layers, and suppose this is the first, uh, suppose this is the original starting layer, and this is the final layer. And then I use this small part to illustrate the computation process of this model. And then 
I give you the overall framework. So in this small part, we have B, A, B, C, D. I use this part as an example. So B, A, B, C, D. So the first part is, we start with the original features. The reason is that, so here we suppose the total number of layer is equal to two, right? So we start with this layer, with this part. So this is the reason why I start with the original features. So what is original feature? So suppose, uh, suppose each node is a document, then the original feature is the bag of words representation. Suppose each node is an image, then the original feature is the pixel. However, however, the original feature is very long, right? Original feature is very long because in terms of the bag of words representation, the length of this vector is equal to the number of words in the vocabulary. And the pixel, the length of this vector is equal to the number of pixels in the whole image. So that is very long. It's not very efficient to for computer to deal with. Of course, in terms of the back of force representation, it is also very sparse. There are many, many zeros. So we would like to learn a compact representation. Learn, we would like to learn a short representation to denote each node. So this is what this gray, gray box does. This gray box is actually a linear transformation. So in terms of each original feature, we, you in, we introduce a parameter w in, into this gray box and transform it into uh, transform it to generate a new representation HI prime here. In terms, uh, I use A as an example. So HI is the original representation, right? Suppose it is back of word representation. And then the, suppose the blue corresponds to A. And this is the original representation, original feature. And this is the gray box W, parameter W. The length of this is equal to F. This is the number of words in the vocabulary. And then this is F prime. So the product of these two should be another vector, and the length of this vector is equal to f, f prime, right? Then, and then, this is the new representation of a, h a prime. So we can see, after these four operations, we can generate four new representations for the original four inputs, h a prime, h b prime, h c prime, and h d prime. And the length of these four representations is equal to f prime, right? f prime. And then, we turn to the evaluation Oh, we tend to the attention mechanism part. So, because in this small part, we would like to learn the representation for B, right? Because this is the target node B the, in this small part. So we would like to ev evaluate your attention for each pair, BA pair, BB pair, BC pair, and BD pair. So for each pair, we use BA pair as an example to illustrate the computation process. So B here, we put HD prime into here and concatenate it with all right, another representation. Suppose we use PA pair as an example. So this is HB prime, and this is HA prime, right? And then we multiply this vector by another parameter A, A transpose. And then this is A transpose. The length of it is equal to 2F prime, because we, this is the concatenation, right? So the product of these two should be a single real value. And then we use another active engineering function, leaky value to transform it. And then we can get the score EBA. So this is score is for BA pair. So now I explain what is leaky ReLU uh, activation function. So as we know, this is ReLU function, right? So if x is less than zero, then the uh, output of this ReLU should be equal to zero. However, leaky ReLU means that this one, when x is less than zero, well, when yeah, when x is negative, when x is less than zero then we multiply x by another factor alpha. Here, in this paper, alpha is equal to 0 0.2. So this is the leaky ReLU activation function. And then we can get the score for each pair. So each pair has its own score. However, the sum of these four scores is not to equal to one, right? So we need to use subnet function to normalize them so that we can get alpha b, alpha b i. Here, alpha b i is the attention for each pair. So the sum of these four attention should be equal to one, right? And the first part is summation. So because we have the output of this of three operation, HA prime, HB prime, HC prime, HD prime, we also have the attention for each pair. So we multiply these two, plus these two, plus these two, and plus these two. This is the summation operation of this gray box. And then in this part, we sum them, and then use the signal, signal activation function to transform it and get the representation for B. HB prime prime here, HB prime prime. 
and HB bracket is the representation for B. And this is the whole small part. However, in this paper, another kind of innovation is the multi header tension. So what is multi header tension? Suppose this is the suppose this is a representation for B, H B prime prime, and suppose the length of it, the dimension of it is equal to sixty four. And suppose the number of height in this multi header tension is equal to two. K is equal to two, the number of height. And then each height has the dimension thirty two because we have two we have two heights. So each height has a tension thirty two. And each height is responsible for 32 dimensions. Because we have two heights, right? So this is the first height. This is the second height. And we repeat the pre previous process again to learn the representation for B of the first height. This is the representation of the first height. This is the representation for the second height. And then we concatenate them to learn the optimal representation for B, HB prime prime, right? Here, one and two represents the first height and second height. And this is the optimal representation for B. Here, the K is the number of heights in this me attention mechanism. In this paper, it is a hyperparameter that also depends on the specific data set. And because I just used two heights as an example, so actually the parameters of these different heights are different, which means the parameters of this process and this process are different. So that HB1 prime prime and HB2 prime prime are different. And then we can continue them. <coughs> so previously, I used this small part as an example to learn the representation of, for B, right? Actually, we can also use this part, repeat the previous process for this part, and learn the representation of A, HA prime prime. Similarly, HE prime prime. And then we turn to this ultimate, ultimate part, this layer one. So remember, for this, uh, uh, for layer two. Because in this part, I only suppose there are two layers. So for layer two, the inputs of the layer two are original features, right? But currently, because we have the outputs from the layer two, so in terms of the inputs of the layer one, the inputs are not original features. But instead, it is HA prime prime, HB prime prime, and HE prime prime, which means the inputs of the next layer should be the outputs of the previous layer. And then we input these three representations into layer one to repeat the previous process again to learn the representation for A. However, one difference between this final layer and the previous layer is the multi header tension. Remember, for the previous one, we learned the representation for these two heights and then concatenate them, right? Concatenate them. So, because this is the final layer, this is the final layer. For final layer, the multi height attention is a little different. So the difference is that, so we first learn the representation for different height, and then take the average of them. We sum them and mod, uh, divide them by two, and then use the mod function to transform them to output the optimal representation for A, HA prime prime rate. So this is the uh, multi height attention for the final layer. For, for all of the previous layers, Suppose we have layer three, layer four. For all of the previous layers, we still use the con si uh, we still use the simple concatenation, but only for the final layer, we use this kind of transformation to learn the representation for the ultimate target node. And then, because we have learned the representation for A, and then we put A into a fully connected neural network, and then we use the label of A to silver this model, to silver this model, and use cross entropy as the loss function to update the parameters of the whole model until convergence. Remember previously, the target node is A, so we construct this kind of tree to learn the representation for A. Actually, if we want to learn representations of other nodes, we can also construct a similar tree for other nodes and use the similar process to uh, learn the loss function, use the corresponding label to silver the whole model and use the cross entropy as the loss function to update the parameters of the whole model until convergence. And this is the model. This is the model architecture. And then I turn to the analysis part. Analysis part. So I have three analysis. The first one is actually the computation can be parallelized of this model because so previously the target dome is A, right? So we can learn the representation of A. Actually, if we want to learn the representation of D, these two processes can be parallelized of A and D. 
as long as there isn't any overlapping part, because this graph uh, is relatively small, so maybe there are some overlapping parts. But if the graph is very, very big, then we can learn the representation for different nodes parallelly. So for the second one, we can assign different importances to different neighbors, which means, so for example, this, is, this graph is a citation network, and A is an academic paper. Maybe the reason why A says B is because A wants to use an interesting point of B. But maybe A and B cannot be classified into the same category. Right? When you are writing papers, maybe you also refer to papers from other categories, like software engineering category. Right? Maybe your paper and, so, and another paper may not be category into, categorized into the same category. So this is the reason why we introduce attention mechanism. Attention mechanism can differentiate the different neighbors. Suppose E and A can be classified into the same category. Then E should propagate its representation to A more than the uh, more than the representation of B. Right? So in this way, we can learn the high quality representation, learn a meaningful representation. The third one is we allow variable number of neighbors. Because in this paper, we can see A has three neighbors, A, B, E. But B has four neighbors, A, B, C, D. Uh, this is also the advantage of this model. And then I turn to the experiment part. So now we have three citation networks, the Cora, Cecil, and PubMed. And this is the number of nodes for each data set, number of ages, number of features per node, which means because these three are citation networks, so the number of features per node is the number of words in the vocabulary, number of classes for each node, uh, number, of, uh, number of classes for the whole data set. And training, number of training nodes, number of validation nodes, and the test node. And the hyperparameter settings of these uh, three citation networks are like this. So we have two layers, and the dimension of the representation is equal to 64. And then the number of heads for multi head attention is equal to 8. And then this is the ultimate result, experiment result. So we can see this is the uh, model of this paper. We can see the performance is very good, the classification accuracy is very good. Now I explain some of these different models. So for the first one, it's the uh, multi-layer perception. So we can see the performance is not very good, right? And in terms of deep work, as mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, deep work is a business of this paper, and it also it only considers the structure of the graph. It doesn't consider the content of each node, right? Because in citation network, we also the, have the content for each node. So in terms of deep work, we can see the performance is not as good as this paper because it doesn't consider the content of each node. It only considers the structure of this node. Uh, GCN. GCN is one of these baseline mod models of this paper, and I will present this baseline model later. OK. <coughs> then another experiment is the biological network. So in terms of biological network, we have uh, 28 different graphs, different graphs a uh, different graph doesn't have the connection between each other. We have 28 independent graphs. And we use 24 graphs for training, use two graphs for validation, and use two graphs for test. This uh, network tries to validate the ability of this model to transfer from this graph to the next graph. And these are the hyperparameter settings. Number of layers equal to three, number of dimensions equal to 256, and number of heights for multi height attention is equal to four. And then we can get the result. So this is the performance of this model, the, the model of this paper. You can see the, the classification accuracy is actually it's very, very high. And in terms of the first one, is the random classification model. The performance is not very good, of course. But for the second one, it's multi-layer perception is 42%. And as for these uh, baseline models, actually, graph stage, currently it is a model used by Pinterest. And actually, we can, uh, it is also based on GCN, Graph Convolutional Network. And we can see the performance of it is not very good. And here, in order to validate the attention, the function of the attention in this model, we also introduce constant GAT, which means the constant means the attention for different neighbors is the same. It's, it's constant. We don't assign uh, different attentions to different neighbors. All the neighbors are the same then we can see the performance 
is not as good as the model that has the tension mechanism. And the last part is the visualization part. So we use Cora data set. We learn the representation for Cora data set. And then we use TSNE to project the uh, data into two-dimensional data space and visualize them. Different color corresponds to different category. And we can see this is the visualization of the Cora data set. Actually, we can see the uh, classification boundary is very clear. This is a pink, green, blue, uh, shallow blue, yellow, red, and so on. So this is the visualization. OK, that's all. Thank you. So somehow it's do you, I think you, you can reuse it, right? Let's say now you first you you have some latent representation, let's say from the original features vectors for A B E and now that you will infer some the latent representation for A. Why they don't use I mean directly to compare? Well, what do you mean by comparison? I mean to learn the latent representation because you have the latent representation for A. You mean after <laughs> okay, so let's say after this like this part, right? Okay. You got some latent represented for A B E. Yes. Right? And uh, after this oh. part, A B E, right? But after this part you also got the latent representation for A. Mm -hmm. So why do you don't constrain that the latent representation here A and the latent representation here are the same? Uh, in terms of this part, the, the representation, the output of this operation is actually a linear transformation. Yeah. But in terms of this one, it is a non-linear tra transformation because we have summation and the uh, sigmoid transformation. But, but I mean, my question is, why they, let's say they have latent representation here and latent representation here, mm -hmm. why they don't use these two, they consider two, the two uh, representation should be the same. I mean, to learn the final representation for a, a like kind of constraint. Deep model. You have multiple representation of a values until the final one. So you start with the input feature for a, for example, then you have a second hidden representation for a, maybe as the third hidden representation until the final one. It's just a deep model. They don't have to be the same. Like this <coughs> layer, we extract specific but features. But they represent for the same entity, or right? same object, or right? same node, right? Same node, yeah. yeah. The same I think this one you have to ask it to the deep learning people. And when, like, you can reuse, right? You have network here and network here as well. So somehow, it's like, add more data. I'm not sure that it can work, but we can try. <laughs> <laughs> so each layer has one uh, rotation matrix. Sorry? So each, each layer, huh? there's only one rotation matrix. Yes. For all. yes, 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 yes. It's not true, right? because you have uh, different, if a node will have different number of neighbors. Oh, oh, you mean the parameters of these three are different from these four, right? No, but each time you put one. The, the parameter of they this three box is the same like this box. These three are the same. <coughs> These four are the same. These seven are the same. Oh, so you mean the, the W parameters yes. are the same? W is shared. I have a question which is not in the review. Can you go back to the results, please? The what correlation first? Okay. 
So do they use the constant get here or not? Where they assign one for all the attention weights? What do you mean? But you, you're showing the next result. You say like they use a, a constant version oh. of get. Different. Yeah. Why don't they consider this version for the classification class? Uh, actually, this is the classification result, classification accuracy. Same yeah, as the previous one. Yes, yes, yes. Both of these two are classification accuracies. Okay, so why they include it here but not in the other one? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Space limitation. <laughs> there are a lot of results here. Maybe <laughs> if we <laughs> no space, right? <laughs> maybe if we don't introduce the attention mechanism, the problem is not the best one. Maybe, <coughs> maybe it is lower than some baseline models. Okay, then oh, another no. one. When you put the weights to one, it's almost the GCN model, right? Yes. 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 But why the results here are so different <laughs> between? So this yeah, what, what does this thing do? Uh, maybe that also depends on the like the activation function, whether we choose the correct activation function or the number of the number of layers of this model. Because the gap is too big, like uh, 0.5 to uh, 0.9. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we can have a glitch right now. <laughs> <laughs>